Welcome to Midweek News, episode 87 for July 31st, 2024. Let's get into it. Open Mandriva LX24.07 Rome is now available with KDE Plasma 6.1 and Kernel 6.10. Mandriva is a descendant of the merger of Mandrake Linux and Connectiva Linux. It is one of the first distributions to be powered by the Linux 6.10 kernel. Ships with KDE Gear 24.05.2 and KDE Frameworks 6.4. X11 is still the default display server, although Wayland is available if you want to experiment. This is an RPM-based distribution, and as such, has more in common with RHEL and Fedora than it might with Ubuntu or Debian or Mint. The crazy idea that GNU Linux is a poor man's operating system. This article tracks the desktop operating system market share between February 2009 and July 2024. Today it appears that Linux is holding nearly 5% of the market. The article does point out that during the period between 2009 and present, Microsoft has had a shift in some markets from describing Linux as difficult to use and only suitable for educated users to claiming Microsoft loves Linux and touting that Linux is the most popular OS on the Azure cloud platform. The Microsoft CrowdStrike debacle, lessons learned. The article shines a spotlight on the crucial part of the cybersecurity CIA triad, which is often overlooked, availability. It is also suggested that we need to start looking beyond cybersecurity to cyber resilience. There needs to be a focus not just on security, but also on availability and performance. Strategies must evolve as we move forward. There will undoubtedly be many white papers and perhaps even books written about the CrowdStrike incident in the months and years to come. It is up to us in the field to take a look at things and make needed changes to keep things humming along. Windows 11 annoying pop-up strikes again. Yes, Microsoft has an ongoing love affair with full-screen pop-up messages that can't be disabled. This time around, it is notifying people their systems aren't backed up with the built-in Windows backup solution. The pop-up is one part threat and one part advertisement to use at OneDrive cloud services. I've never been a proponent of the built-in Microsoft backup tools. They just cannot seem to decide on one and keep evolving it. Plus, I wouldn't want them using my documents to train their AI model. Microsoft reports Linux is the top operating system on Azure. I'm not sure if this is an argument for Microsoft loves Linux or just a money grab for them. You'd have to be blind to ignore the fact that for years Microsoft has been trying different ways to make money on Linux. This just happens to be one of them. Convert WebM videos to any format in Linux. The article talks about FFmpeg, Handbrake, and VLC. It is important to note that while all of these tools are cross-platform, the article focuses on their installation and use on Linux specifically. If you're using a Mac or Windows machine, you can certainly find information out there for your preferred platform. Show Me Cables introduces new right angle ethernet cable. This may be especially interesting for my fellow network geeks in the audience. The cables in question are CAT 6A and feature a 90 degree angled connector to ease installation in tight spaces. These cables will handle 10 gigabit speeds. When I looked at pricing, a one foot cable was going to come out at $19.94, not including tax or shipping. They may not be cheap, but I'd almost be interested in trying a couple just to get first hand experience with them. How to lock user accounts in Linux. Six different methods. We all know there are at least five different ways to do any particular task with computers. Locking user accounts in Linux is no different. Whether you are managing a Linux system for a home, small business, or enterprise, you may have situations where you need to lock an account at least temporarily. AU Star Ryzen 7 5825U WTR Pro 4 Bay NAS. If there's one thing that isn't lacking today, it's choices in the NAS space. If you prefer rolling your own over purchasing a pre-built appliance, this might just be a solution for you. This is a four bay case and motherboard running a Ryzen 5825U. 
that you can easily put TrueNAS or Open Media Vault or Zigma NAS on this unit, allowing you to tailor it to your exact needs. Currently, only the N100 version is available in the US, but this may be something to watch out for if you're looking for a custom NAS. Top 5 Firefox Features for Tab Junkies If you've grown accustomed to opening many tabs, perhaps too many tabs in Firefox, this might just be the article for you. Firefox has several built-in features to allow you to manage your tabs. Some of them Chrome still doesn't offer by default. It's worth a look if you use Firefox, or if you haven't tried Firefox lately, this might just make you want to give it another shot. New Features in Linux Mint 22 from new apps to new options for the file manager, Linux Mint has some new tricks that you will want to take a look at. If you're a Mint user and have not upgraded to Mint 22, you may want to check out the article to find out some of the new features. Microsoft is making Windows 11 updates smaller and more efficient. From the It's About Time files, Microsoft is finally making updates a little easier for those who don't have the fastest internet on the planet and for those pushing updates to multiple machines. The new update approach should deliver smaller incremental differentials containing only the changes since the last checkpoint cumulative update. Time will tell how much of a difference this will make. You know what they say, the road to hell is paved in good intentions. Run zero versus sudo. Just as Microsoft is implementing their own version of sudo for Windows 11 24H2, a change is brewing on the Linux side as well. Run0 is a new privilege escalation program for System D based Linux systems. Like sudo, Run0 will allow you to run commands as a root user. The article goes into a comparison of sudo and Run0. I don't see sudo going away anytime soon on most Linux systems but it is good to know what your options are. How a cheap barcode scanner helped recover from the CrowdStrike debacle. If you're a good netizen or administrator and are using Microsoft BitLocker for drive encryption, you may want to read through this article. In short, one enterprising administrator used barcodes to store BitLocker keys so that they didn't have to type in the key into every machine they needed to decrypt for the CrowdStrike fix. You could do something similar with QR codes as well. If you have seen the videos I have previously done on barcode scanners, you will know that a barcode scanner is seen as a keyboard device by the computer. As cheap as barcode scanners are these days, can you afford to be without one? Convert documents between LibreOffice and Microsoft file formats on Linux. You can, of course, open the document in either suite and save it in the default format for the opposite suite. There are also command line utilities and third-party tools that offer different solutions for conversion, whether you are converting a single document or batch converting multiple documents at once, there is a solution for you. OpenSense 24.7 has been released. I've already done an upgrade on my firewall and there are definitely some nice additions just on the surface level. This release upgrades the base to the latest FreeBSD 14.1. There are performance increases throughout. There is also a modern new dashboard, which is quite the change from the previous versions. How to access your Linux WSL files in Windows 10 and 11. There are a few ways to do this. From WSL, you can run explorer.exe space period to open Windows Explorer at the current location. From an open Windows Explorer, you can also open the share double backslash WSL dollar sign as well. Knowing these tricks definitely makes it easier to move files back and forth from the Windows side to the Linux side of your machine. And finally, how to set up UFW Firewall on Ubuntu 24.04 for beginners. The uncomplicated firewall, or UFW for short, is a built-in command line utility on Ubuntu and Ubuntu-based distributions. There is also a graphical front end for UFW called GUFW, if you prefer working in a graphical interface. 
The article goes through some basic configuration of UFW and a little about how it works. If you are new to firewall rules on Linux, this is a good place to start. And that, my friends, will bring us to the end of Midweek News, episode 87 for July 31st, 2024. Thank you for watching or listening and have a great day.